Hello dear students, uh, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Nusharani speaking from Maharaja's College of Pharmacy. Today I am back with a small demonstration on working principles of uh, fluorometer and uh, sample analysis by using fluorometer. So, today in uh, my presentation I am going to discuss about fluorimetry. In our Maharaja's College of Pharmacy analysis lab, we are having digital photo fluorometer of model 681 and uh, the made is of uh, EI make that is ASICO International. The make is ASICO International and the model is model 681 and it is a digital photo fluorometer. So, dear students let me speak about fluorimetry first. So, this is a concept under uh, spectroscopy and this comes into emission spectroscopy because in this particular procedure we are going to analyze the samples by taking the emitted radiation into consideration or we are going to analyze the samples by measuring the emitted radiation from the sample. So, this is called as an emission spectroscopy. In this particular procedure the emitted radiation is in the form of fluorescence. So, here the detector will be measuring the fluorescent intensity readings and we will be getting the fluorescent intensity uh, measurements in the recorder. Fluorimetry is basically applicable for substances that have the capacity to emit fluorescence which are called as fluorophores like vitamins, steroids, metal complexes, quinine, uh, fluorescein etcetera. These are some of the substances that have the capacity to emit fluorescence after absorbing radiation. So, all these substances can be analyzed by using fluorometer by applying the principle of fluorimetry. So, the basic principle is it is an emission spectroscopy. So, here when the light radiation passes through the sample, the atoms present in the sample get excited, they move to the higher energy levels and there they are very unstable and they return back to the ground energy levels within a fraction of seconds and while doing so they emit some or all of energy in the form of fluorescence and this fluorescence will be measured and sensed by the detector and given as fluorescent intensity readings in the detector in the digital display. This is the basic principle on which the fluorometer works. Here the absorption of radiation uh, takes place in the lower wavelength region that is in the ultraviolet region and uh, emission of radiation that is in the form of fluorescence takes place in the higher wavelength region that is in the visible region. So, let me repeat the absorption of radiation in this particular procedure by the sample takes place in the lower wavelength region that is in the ultraviolet region and emission of fluorescence takes place in the visible region or a higher wavelength region. So, this is a characteristic feature of uh, the principle in uh, fluorimetry. Coming to the different parts of the fluorometer, like any spectrophotometer, there are five basic parts that is the light source, then the monochromatids, uh, then the sample holders or the cuvettes, then um, the recorder, sorry the detector and then the recorder. So, here coming to the different parts of the fluorimeter. The first part is a light source to pass an unfluctuated light into the sample. So, we will be placing the sample in the sample holder. To give an unfluctuated light to pass into the sample, the light source present here in this particular instrument is the uh, tungsten halogen lamp. A tungsten halogen lamp will be present in this uh, uh, instrument in order to give an unfluctuated light into the sample. Then comes the monochromator. Monochromator, the name itself indicates monochroma, that is single color and single wavelength. That means these are the accessories that are going to uh, cut off the unnecessary wavelength and pass only the necessary wavelength into the sample. So, in this uh, fluorometer, the monochromators are filters. Filters are nothing but colored glasses. So, depending upon the different types of samples, uh, we can set the filters, we can uh, put the filters in the place. So, these are the filters, these are these, this is the place for placing the filters. Depending upon the type of solution, we can place the different uh, filters. So, filters are colored glasses, 
Here in this particular uh, fluorometer, we have two filters that is the primary filter and the secondary filter. The primary filter causes the excitation of the sample and the secondary filter causes uh, the measurement of the fluorescent intensity at a particular wavelength after fluorescence is emitted from the sample. So, here in this particular instrument, we have two filters. One filter is before the sample container and one filter is after the sample container to measure the fluorescence intensity emitted by the sample. So, next is the sample holders or the sample containers that are called as cuvettes. These are made up of glass. These are made up of glass. And then the fourth part is the detector which is actually going to sense the fluorescence emitted by the sample. Here in this particular instrument, the detector is a photodiode detector or a photodiode array detector. Basically, it consists of one cathode and a number of anodes. And when the fluorescence radiation after emitted from the sample falls on the inner surface of the cathode, uh, electrons are liberated and these electrons move from the cathode to anode. And uh, in this process, the electrons will be repelled from one anode to another anode to a to a series of uh, anodes and while they move from one anode to another anode, the electron gets multiplied and in this process, the signal gets amplified. So, this is a better detector, um, better than a simple photo tube. So, in this instrument, we have photodiode array detector having one cathode and a number of anodes where the signal gets amplified because of these number of anodes or dianodes that are present. And then finally, the recorder which gives the fluorescent readings in the form of a digital display. These are the different parts of the fluorometer. Today, my sample is a quinine sulphate solution and um, this quinine sulphate solution I have prepared as a working standards starting from 1 microgram per ml to 5 microgram per ml. So, I have prepared working standard solutions of quinine sulphate and the solvent that I have used is 0.1 normal H2SO4, 0 0.1 normal sulfuric acid. So, 0.1 normal sulfuric acid is my blank now. So, first of all I have to set the instrument to 0 by using this blank solution or 0.1 N sulfuric acid. So, I am placing the blank solution. So, when I place the blank solution, I have to put the sensitivity knob at the lowest place that is I have kept it 1 which is the lowest place here. The cal also should be kept at the lowest uh, position. Then I can adjust with the coarse adjustment as well as with the fine adjustment I can adjust to 0. As it is already showing 0, there is no more of adjustment the blank is already showing 0. If it does not show 0 with the coarse adjustment as well as with the fine adjustment, I can adjust it to, I can adjust it to like this, I can adjust it to 0. Then I will take out the blank solution. Then I will be placing one of the concentrations now I am placing one of the working standard solutions into the sample holder and then with the help of the pressing knob and with the cal knob I am adjusting, but no better improvement. So, I am going to higher sensitivity version. So, the standard value is 37. So, to check whether our instrument is calibrated or not, I am placing again the blank and then putting at lower sensitivity. So, we got 0. Then removing the blank and then placing the working standard. 
increasing the sensitivity and checking for the standard reading that is 37. So, this is how we calibrate the fluorometer. Now, we are going to continue with the measurement of fluorescent intensity emitted by all the samples. So, now I have I am placing the first working standard solution that is 1 microgram per ml of quinine sulphate and the fluorescent intensity readings is 24. Taking out the first concentration 2 microgram per ml of quinine sulphate solution the reading is 29. I am placing the 3 microgram per ml solution, the reading is 37. Now, I am placing the 4 microgram per ml solution and the reading is 53. Now, I am placing the highest uh, concentrated dilution that is 5 microgram per ml. The fluorescent intensity is 70. Placing the unknown sample that is the quinine sulphate sample that is prepared from quinine sulphate uh, suspension. its uh, measurement is 36. So, so, this is how we take the fluorescent intensity readings of all the working standard solutions and then we take the fluorescent intensity measurement of the commercial formulation sample or commercial quinine sulphate sample and then as I have uh, told you in my previous videos, we can uh, construct a calibration curve by plot by taking uh, all the fluorescent intensity readings on uh, y axis and the concentrations on x axis. In an excel sheet, we can feed all the readings that we have got, then we will be getting a linear curve, a straight line passing through the origin and then uh, the graph also shows a regression equation that is uh, y equal to m x plus c form of equation, which shows that. Uh, the as the concentration of the quinine sulphate increases, the fluorescent intensity readings also increase. And from the equation, we can get the concentration of the quinine sulphate that is present in the commercial sample. So, whatever uh, fluorescent intensity reading that we got for the commercial sample, we can substitute in the y place of y equal to m x plus c equation in the excel graph that we got and then we can solve for x and the x value gives the amount of quinine sulphate that is present in the commercial suspension sample that we have taken. So, dear students, I think uh, this is a simple principle uh, of uh, fluorimetry and simple procedure that we are following to estimate the fluorescent emitting uh, uh, drugs or samples like quinine sulphate or vitamins or fluorescein or steroids or metal complexes. Hope this video is uh, useful to you can suggest in the comment box and if you like the uh, video or if the video you find it helpful, you can uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.